Yeah, let's get this over and done with before it gets too hot because it does, uh, does tend to warm up past about 8 o'clock. So, uh, you know, I'm no, I'm no Lance Armstrong, but I uh, always like recycling. And uh, hopefully, if I can get some good shots, it'll give you a, a, an insight to, uh, you know, where I live. It's nice. It's, uh, it can be very pleasant. Okay, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, a lot of traffic. Um, there's a lot of wind. I'm not sure the, 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 what effect the wind's going to have on the microphone, but hey, you know, if you don't give it a try, you never know. So I'm coming up to the. Uh, I call them the, tw the Twin Lakes across the uh, the main 221 the um, <clears throat> these, are actually, these are actually man-made lakes I'll, I'll stop in a minute at the end of this one here there's a uh, there's a dam that they built so I mean this, they're, they're very dry at the moment they're normally uh, you normally can't see the tree trunks one minute I'm just going to pull over here There. So, yeah, you normally can't see the uh, the old tree trunk. So, uh, and uh, you know this guy down there fishing, where he is, he's normally uh, the water's right up there. So, but hey, we're at the start of the rainy season now. So hopefully, uh, we're going to get some big, big monsoon rains soon, and uh, we'll fill it back up again. So, there we go. Let's get a big picture of me mug. Yeah, it's starting to get hot already, you know, I'm starting to sweat already, but... Uh... Ah, what do you cop? Yeah. The old fisherman. Me blabber. Ah. Uh, uh, I asked him if there's any fish in there. They, they, they use the old nets. And now I'm going to try and zoom in. It's not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work. But anyway, hopefully we're going to ride around this lake. Okay, so where to go? Where to go? I'm uh, probably going to head down the main road. Turn right at the end. I'm going to meet up with a friend of mine, Paul, who uh, kindly uh, donated me his camera, so uh, I have to be nice to him, <laughs> nice and friendly to him. Boy, it's starting to get very warm. Uh, in, the, in this area, you got to, you can see this sign here. There's a lot of lava durian farms, well, they call it lava. Um, this is down to the red soil that uh, it grows in. Hopefully I can show you a bit later when we get off the, the main drag. But uh, yeah, they say it's an old lava volcano flow. Um, and they say the, the lava, uh, the durian rather, that grows in this soil is uh, top notch. And it, it fetches a, a much better price than the normal durian grown in the, just the uh, brown soil. Um, lucky enough, my farm is uh, lava land and uh, our, our durian is uh, lava durian so uh, we get a bit of a better price for it anyway I'm probably gonna hit the 24 uh, the 221 goes into Cantalac town so I'm gonna head towards Ubon Ratashani as you can see up here so hopefully old Paul will be down the road here somewhere We stop for a coffee. Uh, it's getting very hot now. Um, this is my friend Paul on his bike. Hello. Say hello. Ah, so what do you crap? Hello. Ah, very friendly people. 
Very friendly, friendly oh, tire. There we go, all the buffalo. <clears throat> Generally, well, normally, this whole area is underwater. Um, like I was saying earlier, this uh, over this side of the road, they actually built a dam. Bloody traffic. They built a dam at the far end there. Hopefully I'll ride there one day and show you. And uh, basically when it rains in the monsoon season, the whole area floods. I've even seen the, uh, the water up near the road here, nearly, nearly over the road. So it gives you an idea of how, uh, how much it does rain when it does rain. So yeah. Lots and lots of buffalo. I'm really not sure why people still keep buffaloes. I mean, in the old days, it, they used to uh, obviously use them for the horses and the uh, horses, the carts, to pull the carts and to plough the fields. Obviously, in modern times with tractors, they're not needed. I, I, from what my wife was telling me, they're just uh, people keep them, just you know, for, for nostalgic reasons. You know. Anyway back on we uh, we're up at uh, I don't know if you can see that we're up about 37 kilometers so far so I'll give you a look so we've done a few uh, few miles my batteries actually run out so uh, that's why I didn't uh, do a lot of videoing on the cycling so uh, I managed to get a hold of some cheap ones which probably won't last very long so uh, anyway let's get cracking Uh, I'll do a lake here at the fish market. Oh, that's a fish market, it's like uh, basically fish stalls. Again, I'm sorry about the noise of the traffic, this, this is just off the main road. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they don't buy these fish here because they're not, they're not going to be big enough. But they dry them in the sun, sun dried fish, and uh, they are, they are quite nice, believe it or not. Okay, let's go and uh, have a look around a few of the stalls. Yeah, I think uh, I think the fish, the water's gone down so far, I think the fish uh, have been depleted. <laughs> Here we go, some more fish, looks like some uh, and those sand eels. Mm. I mean, basically, if it uh, <laughs> if it moves out here, they'll eat it. So, what do you cup? I'm ma making a video for YouTube. Uh, say hello. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Again, very nice people. Always friendly. Uh, all different types of fish. They're all, uh, all freshwater fish, unfortunately. And uh, for me, they just don't have that salty flavour that uh, the sea fish I'm used to at home. But, uh, you can see there's some small ones there. Yeah. Oh, alloy, alloy, mate? Alloy, alloy. Yeah, tasty? Yeah, very good. Well, we're nearly there. The reason I'm puffed. Right here we are. One moment, I'm just doing a YouTube video. Video YouTube, okay? Okay. Uh, I've just had to come up a huge hill. Uh, give me a minute to get, catch my breath. So, basically I've stopped at my uh, top of my road. This is where I, I come for my um, Pat Kapow. It's uh, spicy pork with uh, Thai basil. Absolutely delicious this one. And he, know, he knows how to cook it for me. I'm not a great lover of overly spiced food. So, uh, you know, he, sti he sticks, normally sticks one chilli in it for me. 
uh, and a few green ones so let me introduce you anyway yeah Michelin star five star so what do you carp contura cup jamai Da, da. Da, da. Okay, his name is Daw. I keep forgetting. No, I'm not very, I'm not very good with Thai names remembering. So, yeah, mate, mate, give one knee, cup. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm saying I'm not going to eat today. I do name, ah. Give, mark. I've eaten, eaten a lot already. But yeah, it's. Uh, it might not be uh, Michelin style, like I say, but it, they do good food. Excellent food. So uh, I do come here. And uh, I do sit down to eat. Now the COVID uh, ban on restaurants closures uh, over. So, uh, and that's that's another thing. You might you might question. Oh, well, why haven't you got a mask on during the COVID times? Um, basically, we're allowed to. If you're exercising, you don't have to wear a mask. So, <laughs> I, I'm exercising, or, or when you're at home, obviously, only when you're socialising. Okay, and then next door to here we got this is where my wife sells her uh, guava, which I'll uh, I'll do a video later on the on the farm. So we have a lot lot of bananas, and these are rambutans. Very nice. They call them not not bug not. So what do you cup? I'm just doing a, a video video YouTube. Yeah. Me, me, Mark Lau Durian. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, let's get back on the bike and uh, let's get on home and get in, get in a cold shower. Okay, we're back on the road again. This is uh, this is a little road, my little concrete road, I call it. It's hardly tinkering on the tarmac. More, more tinkering on the cement. So, uh, but uh, this is the final kilometre of my my journey. I try and get out most days. You know, I do. I do sort of 20, between 20 and 40 kilometres, and then we go out on a on a a group ride on a Sunday where we do about between about 70 and 80. Sometimes a bit more, depending on how hot it gets. Obviously, the hotter it. The longer you ride, rather, the, the further the sun's in the sky and the hotter it's going to get. And I mean, this is now in the hot season, so uh, it does get up to the late uh, late 30 degrees, and it's just it's just too hot sometimes, like I've uh, already mentioned. So, but anyway, oh, no hands. <laughs> Oh, I'm just getting my breath back after that hill. A lot of the land here, they, they tend to grow, uh, it's, a, it's a root vegetable, I've forgotten the name for it, but it's, it's basically they powder it down into a starchy powder. Um, I mean, my wife calls it tapioca, but obviously it's not. Um, you know, there's mango trees here. But, uh, You've got rambutans growing over there. This is, this is a big rambutan orchard. Um, I think it's owned by a guy in Bangkok because uh, I've never really seen the owner. There's lots of people coming to work on it. But, um, and also, as you see in the distance there, there's a lot of rubber trees. Used to be a big thing here. You know, you used, to, used to get a big, big money for rubber. But unfortunately, the price has collapsed in the last couple of years so a lot of people are actually cutting these uh, huge rubber plantations down I mean personally I like it because it opens up uh, opens things up it can get a little dark and gloomy a bit like something out of Lord of the Rings going through these rubber plantations I prefer the, uh, the openness of nature so let's have a quick look these are these are mango trees. They actually cut they cut these back to virtually nothing uh, a couple of years ago. They were just uh, tree trunks, you know. But they actually grow back. Um, it's just a way of rejuvenating the uh, the mango trees, I think. But anyway, let's slow down. Let's take me go. Oh, take me pedals out of the, my feet out of the pedals. Yeah.
So as you can see, they are uh, very dark and gloomy, and they put all these rubber trees in line, and they they slowly work their way down the trunk. Yeah, let's get over and have a look. There we go. So they slowly work their way down the trunk. They cover the trunk in. Uh, um, I don't know what it's called, but it basically protects the uh, the open the open wound of taking the bark off. So as you can see, they they cut a groove, just one groove, and it, it kind of I call it bleeding, and it bleeds basically, and it drips into there. So and they do this at night when it's cooler. Because obviously the rubber flows better when it's cooler. So, but unfortunately, like I said, the, the market for rubber now is uh, is not good. So a lot of people are, are struggling, basically, because uh, a lot of people got into debt. Big money, big flash cars on finance, rubber collapsed. And uh, unfortunately, they're struggling. But I suppose that happens all, every, all, to all economies around the world, you know. Hey, home sweet home, we're back. And I've got uh, 45 kilometers on the clock. So, not a bad one today. There we have it. Tinkering on the tarmac today. So, as I said at the beginning of the video, try and give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you can, and hit the bell, the notification, that will really help my channel. And uh, by all means, please, comment on what you think of the video, be it negative, be it positive, I'm, I'm open up for any kind of advice, you know, anything, anything you'd like to do or add or anything you think I could have done better, I welcome comments, I call it critique, tinkering on the tarmac, bye.